Kwe Kakana, West Dakota Indigenous Cause, Kitiganzibi Nindonjaba. My name is West Dakota. I'm from Kitiganzibi Nishinaab Bay. So for those of you who don't know, that's an Algonquin community. It's located an hour and a half from, uh, from Ottawa. Right now, I'm currently in my third year in the medical program here at McGill. At the beginning, it was a little overwhelming. Coming from a small community where like the pace is, everything's relaxed and everything goes like, it's, it's slow. You get to the city here and everything's rush, rush. Everybody's like, it seems like everybody's running. I was fortunate enough to have two other Aboriginal students in the class with me and we became really good friends and we just helped each other out because we both feeling the same struggles at times. Growing up, I fell off my path and I started getting into drugs and alcohol. Got in trouble with the law and ended up found myself behind bars for a bit. From there, I was like, you know, I gotta change my life around, start getting back into the culture, start, you know, finding my way again, finding my road. My dad always told me that, like, you see somebody's inside the street, you don't know where that person's been. As we always say, you never walked a mile in their moccasins. Until you're in their moccasins and you know where they've been, don't judge anybody, you know, you weren't that far. A small town res boy like me, Change his life around, anybody could do it, and it's possible. Yeah. It was kind of a big decision to come here to Montreal because my family, my wife, and my kids are back home in the community. My oldest one, his name's Ryder, he's 15 years old. And I have my youngest daughter, she's 11. They're trilingual, they speak Algonquin to their mother, English to me, and they speak French at school. So that's one of the biggest reasons why they're staying there, they're doing really well in that. And it's not because of me, it's because of my wife. My dad's a residential school survivor, so we thought he was doing us good by not teaching us the language to protect us. We're losing at a rapid pace our language. Everything's running through my mind, but I know for sure 100% I want to go back and serve First Nation people. We have a lot of problems with diabetes, hypertension, our mortality rates are higher. So I think by having more Aboriginal physicians to go in, they'll know what's going on. You have lived the experiences that they've lived and the patients will open up to you more because they'll see the same familiar face. With my practice, I would like to try to incorporate a traditional medicine in with contemporary medicine. I'd like to build a bridge between both. I truly believe that there's a place for both of them to work with each other, coincide with each other. Just like the way we see ourselves as Aboriginal people living together with non-Aboriginal people like here in Canada, I think that's a, that's a possibility in uh, medicine. So that's, that's what I like to do.